What does it take to be a hip hop DJ? Make them clap to this. No mistakes allowed, cause to me. Here we go. Word up. Hey, what's going on, you guys? I'm Brandy Garcia here with 93.5 K-Day. We're live on the red carpet for the Grammys special hip-hop exhibit. It's called A Cultural Odyssey, where not only are we going to talk to some different hip-hop artists, actors, you never know who's going to be on the red carpet, producers, who knows, but we're also going to give you an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at some of the artifacts that are here in the museum. Uh, there's also live interactive mixing and listening stations, rare photographs. You never know what you might see, so don't go anywhere. You're on 93.5 K-Day. .com. Yours truly, Brandy Garcia, here with Mr. In Living Color, Tommy Davidson. Would be no hip hop in LA if it wasn't for K Day. Yes, absolutely. I'll so say that again, wouldn't be no hip hop in LA if it wasn't for K Day. Remembering back in '89, I think, or yeah, '89, um, I first heard K Day, and MC Light had her first single, and I thought it was a little boy. Really? Yeah, and I was like, what is this little boy? He is bad, and it was on that station. And that station has stayed true to it, and, 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 and that station has given rise to the whole L.A. rap explosion right. from the very beginning. N.W.A., Ice, everybody from here, Warren G., the Who's whole Who's your favorite West Coast rapper? Uh, Snoop. Really? Yeah, man. Are you kidding me? Well, and you know, we're out here because it's uh, the hip-hop exhibit for the Grammys, mm -hmm. and uh, Snoop's actually featured in this book. Have you had a chance to look at the book yet? I have not, but I'm looking to have a free copy. But anyway. <laughs> so, Snoop, uh, who else? You know, uh, actually in this exhibit, they have some of uh, Tupac's handwritten lyrics. Oh, yeah. You know what? Pac is probably my favorite. Okay. You know, Pac is probably my favorite. Um, Snoop, eh, they tied for first. Nice. Yeah, because both of them were able to take hip-hop like like mega hip hop stars do and diversify hip hop into other areas and other genres. So I just heard uh, you talking to uh, our little next door neighbor over here, Yahoo Music, and uh, I heard you talking about your relationship. You have an actual personal relationship with, with Puff Daddy, aka P. Diddy, aka Diddy, whatever he calls himself today. Um, talk about his influence as far as like anything you've been able to learn from him in, in the music side. Well, um, you know, I've, I've learned from Puff that, you know, we know our music, so we need to keep it what it is and take it straight to the people. It can't be influenced by music execs. It's got to be the music from the street. Unless it's an exec like Russell Simmons or an exec like uh, Andre Harrell or Jay-Z or now Kanye, you know, because the legitimacy of the music is very important. The, 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 the realness of it is what hip-hop is about. So you've actually been a fan since the very, very, very beginning of hip-hop? About 1977. Yeah. About so 77. What, what do you think about how hip-hop's changed and where we're at right now? Or you know, Do you have any feelings on that? Well, hip-hop is, 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 uh, is enmeshed with the American pop culture. And it's enmeshed with global pop culture because you're not going to get any industry that's not touched by it. Clothing industry, car industry, you name it. The but did you think it would be like that ever? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, anything that, that, that African Americans touch and are given a chance to, to, to excel in is going to change. You know, it's what Ali did for boxing, it's what Michael Jordan did for basketball, and Magic Johnson did for that, it's what, it's what Duke and them did for jazz, it's what Chuck Berry and Sam Cooke, it's what Sam Cooke did for soul. Oh, and I must interrupt, it's what you guys did for TV. It's what In Living Color did for TV. You know, and I don't take credit for that, that's, you know, a brainchild no, but, of... But you were a part of that. I was a part of it, yeah. Yeah, but the creative genius of Keenan Ivory Wayans and Robert Townsend and Eddie Murphy and, and um, Arsenio Hall and even Richard Pryor, the people that preceded that show. That show was a, a, a metamorphosis of the era, that, the non-era. And I only say non-era because it wasn't that recognized as an era that built into it. But it, was, but it, it gave rise to a new comedy pop culture that led to what we have now, Shaq's, Shaquille O'Neal's uh, All-Star Comedy Jam. Def Which Jam. is hilarious, by the way. Def Jam. I'm on it, by the way. Anyway, um, Def Jam and, and that whole comedy movement was, and, and the whole television comedy sitcom movement was pushed forward by that, by that generation, that, 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 that pre-generation of writers and directors and, and uh, comics right at the tip of that. And one of the catalysts of that was Eddie Murphy and his movies. It was probably the main catalyst that pushed us in to the 90s. In your opinion, sum up hip-hop in one word. Uh, the reason why we do what we do. Is that one word? N not quite one word, if but... We made it, if we written it as one word. <laughs> okay, I'll say it as one word. The reason why we do what we do. There you have it. Tommy Davidson, thank you so much for thank your time. You. And what station do you listen to when you're in L.A.? K-Day, baby, what? All right, we're live here on the red carpet for 93.5kday.com. I'm Brandy Garcia. This is Jukebox. Hey, how y'all doing? And uh, for those of the people that might not know who you are, what do you do? Give me a little rundown. Okay, well, I'm Jukebox. Uh, I'm a music producer and a songwriter. Uh, y'all yeah, might have heard of the song called Whip My Hair. You know what I mean? I whip my hair back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would do it, but I don't want to mess my hair up. You don't mess your hair up? <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Just whip it. Feel free, you know? I, I'll do it later on tonight. Okay, okay. After a couple drinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so what was the concept uh, for that song? I mean, it's, I, obviously, you know, you whip your hair, but what was like, we, did you write it for Willow? Or, or did you just write it and then it happened to work for her? Uh, I did just write it, um, you know, and then I tailored it for Willow uh, after the song was done. Uh, because it kind of just made sense after I sat down with Overbrook and their team and, you know, we discussed the uh, creative vision for Willow. And as um, soon as I left it, I was like, this song would be pretty amazing for her if I just made the right little tweaks, made it, went in, Willow put her thing on it, you know, put her special touch, and it just became this massive thing. It just became really real. It was actually one of the first songs we recorded. So, the first song we recorded, so yeah. Wait, was it, I have to ask, was it weird working with a, a younger person like that? No, 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 because... <laughs> because, because you know you would think that. Yeah, no, you, you would, but you forget that she's nine when you're around her. Like, she was giving me relationship advice. Like, it was crazy, like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Willow was giving you relationship I, I, advice? Yeah, yeah, no. Amazing. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, it's, it's, it's like you gotta love them. It's like they, they just live this advanced life and... You know, it's just, they're just beyond their, their years, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's, it's all fun, um, you know, I love it. I love it, so. So, you've done that. What do you have planned for the future? Um, what I have planned for the future, I plan on trying to make history. Uh, my goal right now is just getting many singles as possible. Uh, you know, I've just worked with Cher Lloyd uh, from X Factor, Jawan Harris over at Jive, um, and a lot of the new upcoming stars because like, I like working with them because I feel like, you know, it's just a lot of new fresh talent, you know, that the world needs to see. So, you know, I've just been trying to wrap up all that stuff and just have my hands everywhere, you know what I mean? So, Smart man. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're here for the Hip Hop A Cultural Odyssey exhibit at the Grammys. And uh, have you had a chance to actually go up there and, and look at any of it yet? No, I haven't. I haven't, but I plan on to. Because you know what they have, right? They actually have actual artifacts 
from hip hop, like Grandmaster Flash's turntables. They have uh, Tupac's handwritten lyrics. They have, I, I mean, one of the Kangles yeah. from LL yeah. Cool J. Yeah, you yeah, know, I'm definitely gonna go check it out, like, cause I just got here, so you know, I'm gonna go run up in there and I'm gonna go, you know, just be wild. Hopefully, I can take some photos and stuff without, you know, if security don't tackle me or something. So yeah, but yeah, no, I'm definitely excited to uh, go check that stuff out. It sounds like a lot of cool stuff. All right, well, thank you so much, you guys. Jukebox, and you heard it first right here, 93.5 K Day. All right, you guys, we're out here live on the red carpet with the infamous DJ <laughs> Quick. <laughs> yeah, that's me. No, I'm just like, well, you know we're on here for K-Day and everything, so uh, we're out here for the Hip Hop A Cultural Odyssey Grammy Hip Hop Exhibition. Did you ever no. think no. that we would get something like that? Well, no. Of course not. I mean, because, you know, you know Hip Hop takes it on the chin all the time, but now to be acknowledged by our, our like, the people we aspire to be makes me, it's all worth it. It's like... I finally get to graduate. <laughs> this is hard. I, I mean, it's crazy, you know, watching from the first time when they allowed rap into the Grammys in '89. Right. right, when people used to boycott, when our hip hop, you know, like, um, um, who did Will Smith boycott him, rock him, like, they was on their head. And I was like, I got it because back then the Grammys were about acknowledging music. And not only did the Grammys not acknowledge hip hop and its growth, but Don Cornelius from Soul Train didn't acknowledge it. Like he dissed it every chance he got because he didn't understand it. That's just the older people not realizing that they're getting a little crusty and they gotta let the youth do it. And, well, and you wanna know what's nice, I actually had a chance to check you out. Uh, the other day he was doing a show, he got brought up on stage with Man, yeah. and uh, it was neat because you almost endorsed a lot of these younger cats coming right. up in the game from man to the rejects yeah. to uh, YG right. to talk about you know the passing on of the torch well first of all they remind me of me when I was their age and how bad I wanted to be appreciated for what I knew and what I wanted to offer to you know to the to the culture it wasn't even about getting fans and making money and going on tour and you know and and, and being a you know a, a celebrity hoe with groupies it wasn't about that it was about what I knew about music like I really spent a lot of money and time and study all of you know like the you know the, the Eric B and Rakim records like really the album cuts you know what I mean and Run DMC obviously and it, you know I wanted to share that with everybody like I want everybody to know that this was great music and it was for us like in the kid world and they remind me of us because they're doing the same thing for their generation a whole generation later than mine so they're, the, yeah, they're the I, next Out of down all the, the songs, and you've been involved and had a hand in so many different records, can you pick one that, that is just the standout for you? One song. If I had to do it in one song. Wow, that's, a, that's the toughest question I've ever been asked in my life. Um, I love Let's Get Down by Tony, Tony, Tony. That's such a dope record. But one song, like, which one song would it be? I'm gonna be thinking about that for a like, year like straight. Like you're on an island and you had to choose, and this was the only song you could listen to over and over. It's just like the one record you could work with. It would probably be my new record, "The Love of My Life." Out of all the records. All the records, because it's the newest one, and it reminds me of an old record. It's like it's the perfect loop. Nice. You know, it's all lucky right. too. Or so <laughs> I like tonight. Or sweet black. Or, I know. said just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Okay. Right, and I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick one record. Um, Johnny Jackson, all for you. Nice. You hear that, K Day? <laughs> you heard that. All right. So you got a new album. I hear you're working with my homie from H Town, Texas, Bum B. Who else? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who Bones else did you work there. with? Uh, Busy Bones on the album. Oh, no, um, Ice Cube's on the album. Um, Dewele. You know, Gary Scheider. Rest is, you know, Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, and my new artist, Gift, Gift Reynolds. I'm about to sign a kid from Detroit. Pretty talented dude. He's, he's a part of the, the new movement of music, you know. So, speaking of Detroit, yeah. you know, Eminem's nominated for 10 Grammys. Not only is that phenomenal, you know, that he's a rap artist and that he has the most nominations out of everyone, it, what, what are your predictions for this year? How many do you think he'll get? Um, probably 11. <laughs> you, you would say something like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'm left handed like him. He's my frat brother. All right. Go in. Anything else you want to say to our K-Day listeners? I want to say that there's nothing better than turning my radio to 93.5 K-Day and listening to Biggie Smalls. That's the best rap voice ever in my Mercedes. What's better than that? You know what I mean? Eating, eating Snicker peanut butter bars. Listening to Biggie Smalls 
Dude, going back to Cali on 93.5K, what's better than that? In Southern it. California in the winter, when we have to wear t-shirts, can't even wear a jacket. California is it, and K-Day is California. Garcia 93.5 K-Day. Hope you enjoyed it. Hip Hop, a cultural odyssey right here at the Grammys. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go get my party on. So make sure you check us out online, www.93.5 K-Day.com. I'll catch you later.